Family, I want to encourage those who want to drive in, you can drive in on the left, park your vehicle and you can sit in the vehicle. Those who are standing, I want to encourage you, please remember the uh, COVID protocols. We need to be at least one and a half meters apart. My apologies that we have to be outside in the sun. Unfortunately, we are not allowed in. Family and friends, thank you, thank you for your presence here. I'm going to graciously and humbly remind you again that please we need to comply with COVID protocols and regulations. The sanitizers here in front, please, if you need to sanitize yourself. I'm humbly requesting that if you have any flu-like symptoms, if you're not well, if you have a fever, if you have a cough, would you please isolate yourself? We, we're requesting that if you're not well, you're free to bring your car in, park your car inside and you can sit in the car. Uh, humbly for your safety and for the safety of those around us, uh, I please humbly ask that you comply with us.
step it on the so that we can commit. One Thessalonians chapter four, verse fourteen to seven, uh, seventeen reads for us: For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also would sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The Lord always blesses the reading of his holy word. Pastor is going to uh, pray for us, and while Pastor is praying, the hearse will be open. Shall we bow for prayer? My Father, we look up to you today. Your word says, I look up to the heavens, for whence cometh my help. And we know, Father, in moments like these, Father, when our hearts are sore, when our hearts are filled with sorrow, Father, we know that you are our help and our strength. And I pray today, Father God, even as we would gather to celebrate the life of our dear brother Robin, we ask for your Holy Spirit just to fill us. Father God, we pray for the members of the bereaved family today. Father, I pray for added strength. I pray for grace and for mercy today, O oh God, that you give them strength from deep within, O oh God. We come to God this service to you. We pray that in all we do, Father God, that we would be careful to give you all the glory, for you alone are worthy today. Won't you bless us, Holy Spirit, and won't you lead us today? For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you today to the farewell service of our brother Robin Suraj Raghavadu, more fondly known as Uncle Rob. For those who are here today, it's an indication of your love and your support for the family. For those who are joining us by streaming, we thank you for your presence. Today we lay to rest and we bid farewell to a humble man of God. Brother Rob was known for his perpetual smile. He never stopped smiling. I remember when he came out of hospital with his operation, he stood right here after Sunday morning service. And his words to me was, I have a testimony that we serve an awesome God. I want to assure the family today that that awesome God that Brother Rob praised is seated with him today. He's in the presence of that awesome God. Family, the reader, children, sisters, on behalf of the leadership of St. Ocean Evangelical Church and our members, we want to convey to you our heartfelt condolences and sympathies. We share your pain, we, say, we share the agony that you feel today because we've also lost a brother. I want you to be assured that the strength and the peace and the grace of our Lord will sustain you. While we mourn the death of a dear beloved brother today, I want to assure you that our brother experiences the other side of death. He's in heaven experiencing the victory and the glory of having died as a child of God. He's probably sitting in heaven today asking God, Lord, why didn't you get me here earlier? So our brother is in heaven enjoying the glory and the victory of death. I know it's hot today, so please, if you can find a shady spot, it's fine. And I'm appealing to you again, please be careful, observe your social distancing. We're going to stand up and we're going to... It's going to be difficult, we're not going to view the body today, so I'm going to ask you to stand and observe a moment's silence, after which our brother Laban will lead us in because he loves. Let's stand, shall we? Please close your eyes and let's all observe a moment of reverence and silence.
He sent his, tu- his, uh, sent his tribute and he's asked me to uh, read it for him. His tribute reads, Tribute to our dearest Robin Wilson. Blessings were upon us when you entered our lives 30 years ago and immediately we got attached to you and your family. Your warm, sincere, encouraging and, in- and inspiring personality drew everyone towards you. We would anticipate the weekends when you visited Rita in Cowdes. You would bring the latest technology along or something new to amaze us. The Cowder family grew fondly to you. I remember my very first trip to your home in Sipingo Rails, where I accompanied Rita on her first visit. Your wedding was one of the most epic weekends in our lives, and we all would cherish and rejoice those memories, as I always echo the sentiments of your wedding anniversaries. We had the, tr- the privilege of being neighbors for a while when you relocated to Ankumas. We would spend every afternoon in your honorable company. I recall many late nights that you would spend helping us study. We spent most weekends and school holidays together. You would tag us along to the movies, the restaurants, to view Christmas decorations, seasonal festivals, and sound competitions, etc. Our achievements were your victory, and I will never forget how to, sorry, how you took me to the independent newspapers and waited patiently till midnight to obtain my metric results. You made a positive impact in the lives of many, even the teenage boys of Sun Park grew fond of you. You played an integral part in our lives as you supported our vision and always steered us on the correct path. During our trying times, you were our beacon of hope, our right-hand man. You celebrated life to the fullest, turned every occasion into a celebration. You would DJ, dance, and party the night away. After moving to Athlone Park, we would see you almost every day for a quick chat, swim, or to collect your favorite treat that my mom had prepared for you. My dad would get so excited to see you and always refer to you as his brother and partner in crime. My mom truly honored and admired you as a brother-in-law, as she and Rita shared unique sisterly yet motherly bond. You re- we, we're really going to miss all our lunches, dinners, and quality family time. We were ever too eager and excited to have y'all over and cook up a storm. Even during the initial early stages of 
lockdown, you would park on the driveway and chat to us. Family meant the world to you. Your famous words, family is blood. And you lived up to these words. You were never shy to host or arrange a family outing. And you would go to great extent to make sure everyone attends and has a good time. You made it your point to call to restore and, reuni and reunite families. You were never shy to educate yourself and also transfer your knowledge to others. You fulfilled your dream of visiting India in January 2018. I remember how excited you were in November last year to attend your trip to Pombanambi in the vicinity of Sun, of Sun City. I remember your 50th birthday party and how excited you were to celebrate this milestone with all of us. We all had fun wherever we went. We were grateful to have had so many eventful memories like the boat trip at Durban Harbour, your birthday weekend away in the Wild Coast, Sarisha and Sonalia's birthday party at Sibaya Casino. The last few years were challenging in your life. You placed belief in God and remained positive, courageous and maintained a high spirit. You will motivate others to remain positive to your own experience, even though you are personally experiencing challenges. My heart saw by the mere fact that I could not personally deliver this tribute. Pardon me, as I am emotional. I would personally like to express my sincere gratitude to you for having had such a positive impact on our lives. Your memories, lessons, words of wisdom and humble hacks of sincerity dwell in our hearts forever. We will continue to hold you in high esteem as our dear uncle, motivator and inspirator. My parents and late grandparents were blessed to have had you as a pillar in their lives. I trust and wholeheartedly honor you. To our bereaving family, I pray that God grants us the strength and courage to deal with this passing. Rita, Sarisha and Sonalia, be strong. We love you and will always be there for you. We have indeed lost our great angel on earth, our dear Robin. However, heaven has indeed again their angel. Rest in peace, Mosa. May your legacy live on. We love you always. Love from myself, Piresh, my parents, Bobby and Antia, my sister, uh, Navisha, Raj and my brother, Nerishi's wife, Lee Han, the kids, Karina, Duav, and Rahil. Where is uh, our brother? Famous to be here. Yes. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for these kind words. I'm sure it means a lot, a lot to the family. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend. He has all our birds. We're going to sing together this beautiful hymn. You've got the hymn notes. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Jesus knows our every week. 
Something. You always told me, Ted, no matter what that man tells you, you just keep quiet, keep your calm. Keep your calm and be a better person if you walk away. Uncle Robin has played a big impact in my life. He's always taught me right from wrong and he's always given me the best advice. Not, he's not like major manly advice for our small kid, but mainly he does. He nurtured, nurtured me to be a better man when I grow up. I can tell you a lot, of, a lot about him, so much about him. I spend every, every holiday in the house. It's really for him. The phone should ring. Just because Rogan's phone is ringing, but it's up. I first two in the morning. Wait it up to go break down to fix that truck. To come back home. <laughs> Even when I was in my house, after when I asked him all it is, I'll go home, I had that phone ringing and the robin is ready to wake up and to go to fix the truck. To come back. And the robin, I can never ever picture him. That's why I don't want to look at his face. It was the last memory I got of him when he kept. He's been through so many times the hospital. He's been to, I, I think I think it's four times. But when he, when I saw him the last time, the last memory I of him. No one could say that man was sick. No one could say that man had a patient. No one could say that man wasn't the same man. Nothing broke him. Nothing broke him. God took him away because God wanted him. <laughs> he only told me one day, he told me, uh, he, I'm sure I know that because I'm lost his brother. He told me, the pastor told him. He asked the pastor, his mother asked the pastor. Why did you take my wife? Why, why did my brother go? He said, No, sometimes God takes you away before when your time is right. He takes you away before you become more destructive. He takes you away before, before you can become a, a different person. He takes you away at the right time. And she is an adult. And her grower are your fellow strength. He was everything to us. So now your father. How you should put makeup on him while he's sleeping. Huh? He wake up, he goes to the shop, he have the have eyeliner, makeup, makeup on his face. And he doesn't care because his daughter didn't give the love he had for his children and his family. He is a great man. I never cried legacy in my life for anyone. anyone. But he was a great man. I was, there was no no more have a DJ in our family now. For all our parties. All our get togethers and the Robin not gonna be there. But all we can do is to be strong and to know that he's with us in our heart. How you can hear his voice? Y'all can picture his voice. Him talking, him yawning, how he snores. <laughs> Who can sleep without the Robin snoring? <laughs> but he was a great man. He was a great man. I thank you all for coming and coming to the He was a great man. God, God is taking away for the right reason and God has his plan. You may be looking down at us and say, look at my family. Look at the impact I have. It came to my family. Everyone, everyone should just be happy that God to be with the Lord. And we know where he is gone to be with. With who he is gone to be with. And remember this, Agoromo was very great in English, not like me. He always tell you the story. Hey, one day I wrote an essay. 
This will be the second person. How many marks say, sorry, Shah? How many marks you say? He say, 100 marks will be the second person. He say, and then we are so sharp in his metric, in our metric here. What he'll do, all the books will come now. He'll read the book first now. Right? Hey, he'll read the book first. First and first, he'll read the book. They all came to read the last cup question now. Hey, what the, what the hell is Ah, you wrong. <laughs> wrong, but read the book again, he tell you. Thank you, thank you, Rob Bokavit. I know he's very happy. I feel a little bit better now. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, son. That's what uncle's all about. They leave memories, lasting memories. They leave impressions on your life. And Brother Robin did that. He was, he worked with me when he did missions work in Pilgrim. And I will always remember him for his humility and love for people. Unbelievably patient. In the most trying and difficult times, Robin will be smiling at you. Sometimes you get irritated with him, get angry with us. No, Robin will be smiling at you in the most difficult times. Uh, Amazing grace, amazing grace. I'm going to sing two verses of this beautiful hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. children want to talk at the funeral, but it's a blessing to have them. Selena, Emma. My dearest, dearest mama, we can stand and say a hundred speeches, but no amount of words will, will ever be able to do justice to you because you in reality were a larger than life person. On the day you were called home, we were left heartbroken and with an unimaginable void. But heaven's gates were wide open and the angels were rejoicing, welcoming you home. I remember you saying long ago, when your earthly, de your earthly departure should not be one of sorrow, but rather a celebration of your life. A life you lived unapologetically into the fullest. We, as youngsters, should take a page out of your book of life. In my 25 years of life, I have learned from you many things, but these are the few things that stick out to me as I write this. Fix your focus on God and trust Him fully. Family is the most important, of course, after God. Honor and respect your parents. Do anything and everything that makes, it, that makes you happy, regardless of what others do. Our karaoke king, life of the party. Nothing will ever be seen again. I will miss your loud voice, your intense debates, your kind heart. And most importantly, your infectious smile. Ma, Siri, Sonali, Dad was tired. 
I need it to rest. I know for sure that he left in peace and with confidence, knowing that you will never ever be alone. You have us, and you will always have us. My mama, who is partying in heaven right now, rest easy and sing all the karaoke that your heart desires. We love you in infinity and we'll miss you just as much until we meet again. We hear the pain of dead children, maybe lost a dear dear brother. Hide me now. Maybe so. I wish you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Firstly, I would like to thank each of you present here and would ask you personally for attending the graduation service of my father. I am Felicia, his eldest daughter, and I will be leading tributes from my mother, Lisa, my sister, Sonalia, and myself. Please bear with me. I will start with my mom. A tribute to my loving husband. Dear Robin, today is the hardest day in my entire life. You have left a void in my life and no amount of words can express the way I feel. But I know for sure that you are working with the Lord. I would like to thank you for showing me how beautiful life can be. For the past 
past 28 years that I have known you, you have taught and helped mold me to be the best wife and mother to our two girls, Sonalia and Felicia. You really completed my life. I am really going to miss all the things that we did together, especially your golden voice when singing, all the long drives, sitting at the beach, and just being together. Life without you will never be the same. Forever in my heart, your loving wife, Rita. The next tribute was written by my sister, Sonalia. I really struggled with what to say. Losing my dad is the greatest loss I've ever had to endure. I know and I've been told he's with his father in heaven, rejoicing and smiling down on us. But I still want him here. I have my hopeful moments, but I'm not without my sorrow. I could not have spent the past 21 years with a man like my father and not be broken to have to say goodbye. Love leaves a memory no one can feel, but death leaves a heartache no one can heal. I don't know where to be begin. All I keep thinking is how I wish I had that one more opportunity to see you, Daddy, to hear your voice and to see you smile. My father was the life of the party and lived life on his own terms. He loved his family immensely, looked for every and any opportunity to spend time with them. There was never a person he left out. It's difficult as it is to look back on all the memories, knowing I'll never be able to relive them, relive them with him. He was my motivator. He pushed us to do our best. And I can proudly say that everything that I am today is because of him. I used to tell my dad whenever and wherever I could, and it's extremely difficult for me to acknowledge that I won't be able to do that anymore. My dad was strict as a father, as a father should be, but it was because he loved us and wanted best. Somehow I could always get around my father, be it for changing the channel on TV, of convincing him that 10 p.m. on a Wednesday night was the perfect time to take a drive for ice cream, and he'd agree. There's not much I can say about Dad that's not already known. He loved music and would sing karaoke wherever he could at home. My dad enjoyed his life the fullest and did what he wanted to. I don't think I'll ever be able to look at things the same way. I don't know how to express just how much I love and miss him. Dad, I may not have said it as much, but I love you, and I always go. And I know that one day I'll be able to see your smiling face again. How lucky am I to call you Dad? And the last one I will read is my own. There's not much I can say that will properly sum up what I feel in my heart. No amount of elaborate words or carefully written sentences could possibly enough be enough for me to put my emotions to paper. Simply put, this is difficult. I know it takes strength and courage, all of those things my father spent almost 26 years instilling in me. But still, without him, both those qual qualities would out of reach. So I stand here before you, broken and confused, among an array of other emotions that I myself have not yet deciphered. For every one of you attending today, personally or even virtually, I'm sure you have some you have had some encounter with him, or even by chance heard about him. So you would understand exactly what I mean when I say he was a terrific man. Good hearted and he held no grudges. He made friends easily and tried his best to assist motivate and help anyone who needed it. He was the head of my family and throughout the years I've seen him have to make difficult decisions so that he could provide best for us. He made sacrifices. As father and daughter we had our differences and they were many. My father was happy and he lived for the moment. He was headstrong and very opinionated and sometimes I couldn't quite understand him. He made sure to teach me independence from a very young age, and then I didn't quite comprehend why I needed to know all of this. 
but today standing here, I don't think. He made sure to teach me things like paying light bulbs, applying to universities. He made sure I learned to change a tire, which I forgot. Things that were so simple that I often thought, Dad, why couldn't you have just done it? My father lived life on his own terms, despite us cautioning him at many times. But I'm glad, I'm glad he lived his life the way he wanted to. Dad, I know you're in a place that's far greater than where I am. You had fulfilled your duty as the son of God on this earth, and even though we needed you all, God needed you too. You have been a testimony of courage and perseverance for as long as I can remember. And though I didn't say it much, I hope you knew through my actions how much I loved you, how much I do, and how much I always will. I know you love us. Just easy, Dada. You. I want you to know that your dad trusted you were his right hand man. He had such confidence in you. He loved his family, he spoke very proudly of his family. Before Jorash does the obituary for us, the eulogy, we're going to sing together the first and the second verses of There's a Land that is Fair as well. There's a land that is fairer than faith, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet absolutely guarantee you that anyone who's ever met Robin Mama will never tell you that he was a bad man. And I can guarantee you that he left with us with absolutely no enemies at all. No one would ever say that he was a bad person. If you ever needed something, he was always there for you. And as I read the obituary. My uncle Robin Raghavadu was born on the 27th of July, 1964, to grandparents, to my grandparents, Dolly and George Raghavadu. He was the eldest of four children. He grew up and resided in Chakrasad Road, Stingo Rail, until he was called to rest. He attended various schools and was a member of Santosham Evangelical Church, where his love for the Lord shone, shone through his mission at work. In 1994, he married my aunt Rita, and together they became parents of daughters Sirisha and Sonalia. Robin was an ardent music lover and owned his own mobile phone company over the years. 
He also had a love for soccer and had spent his time as secretary of the Lincoln City Football Club. He survived by his wife Lisa, daughter Sarisha and Tnalia, sisters Roshni and Macy, and brother-in-laws, brother nieces and nephews, and a host of other family and friends. Before we listen to God's word, we are going to sing, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Then I'm going to ask for the Danny to come and pray for us before for us to pray for me as well. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship His holy. simple word to describe Robin. And today I found that word in Serisha's script. And that word goes that my father was a terrific Tell me that's the word I've been looking for life. Robin was a terrific guy. No amount of words that will be able to explain caliber of person Robin Marvel. Like I told the family last night, I've always said that Robin was my right hand man. And as of last night, I've changed it to Robin being my left hand man, where the, the blood pumps and flows in my life. Because Robin has been a pillar for me, even if at, at work. Like Taryn has said, when he phoned Rob Mama at 2 o'clock in the morning, Rob Mama was going out on a breakdown. Rob Mama was going out on a breakdown because I phoned him and told him, listen, Robin, you need to go to do this breakdown. So much so now it makes me feel so guilty that in the time when he was grooming up his son, that I had to take him away and tell Robin not to go and fix this truck. But nevertheless, from what I heard from Tyron's tribute, was Robin groomed him. Even in the time that he'd been working, and being out, he still had the time to groom those that he loved. And Robin not only groomed his cousins and their children, he also groomed my two children as well, 
Serena and Serisha. That's why today they stand here sobbing, literally sobbing, because their mama is no more. Their mama was their life, and so was the, our life as well. Ryan, Trisha, Serena, Serisha, Suresh and Ryan, they were partners in crime together. Whenever we went out, we went out as a family as 12. The six nieces and nephews would take one table and they'll want us, six of us, and I'll sit on the other table. They say, we don't want to tune with your bullies. They all can sit one side and we will sit on the other side. And let me tell you another thing about Robin. You know, some people might think that we have forgotten about. Whenever we went out anywhere, we always went out as a family. We live in here, even if Pastor Craig will tell you, or even uh, Brother Victor will also tell you that. We always moved as a family. We moved as a convoy. You find us moving in two or three cars as a family. The old 12 of us used to go out. And we all, we will phone Robin and tell Robin, we are going X, Y, and Z. Meet us there. Okay, I'm coming. We tell uh, Ray and Roshi, we are going certain place. Okay, we are coming. We will all leave together. Rowan, we booked the table for 12. And when we land, earthly homes are temporary. I know the home of Brother Robin, visited him on a number of occasions there at his home. Robin loved his home. He loved the time that he spent in his home. But yeah, today I want to say to you, precious family of God, that Jesus promises a home for each of his precious children. Robin's home in heaven was ready for occupation. So graciously God called Robin home. I want to say to you today as a family, COVID did not take our dear brother away. It was a calling of God upon his life that took him home. Yes, I'm aware that, that COVID is captivating and dragging our hearts and taking people away. But I want to say this to you today, that Robin's life was taken because God had called him home. The calling of God upon his life was so great that Robin adhered to go where God is. Before Robin was born, this date was set for him. Before he was, the foundation of the earth were laid. God knew the day that our dear brother Robin would be called home. So I want to say to you today, family, do not be upset about COVID, but celebrate with Jesus because he took your precious father home. He took your precious husband home, my dear sister Rita. And he took your dear brother and your dear uncle home, precious family of God. Robin's home was ready. And God had called him home. So Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And Robin's place was ready. And here's the thing about that home. He's not sharing with anybody. Because each one would have their own place. Each one would have their own precious home up there in heaven. And Robin's home was ready. God promises a home, precious family of God. Today, I just want to also encourage you and say that God promises heaven. The place that God is gone, Jesus is gone to prepare for all of us is heaven. We know that Jesus rose to heaven to be on the right hand side of the Father. And today he is promising that he will come to take us all to be with him. I just want to say this to you today. You may refer to Robin as being late, but Robin is not late. Robin is early because he got there before us all. He is enjoying the promises of heaven and he is in the presence of God in heaven right now. And the promise of heaven was fulfilled in the life of our dear brother Robin. You know, one day in conversation with Robin, when we were standing at the workshop, and I think he was working on one of the trucks, and I asked this question to Robin, do you think that you would spend eternity with Jesus? And Robin dropped the spanner. And I asked Robin, why did it fall? He said, no, Pastor, there was grease in my hand. It slipped. But don't worry, I'm spending eternity with Jesus. Robin assured me, I'm spending eternity with Jesus. And we had this long, long conversation. And Robin said, when my time comes, I assure you today that I will be ready. 
That's the most crucial thing, dear families. I know we're all standing here today in the heat. We've all taken time off and we've come to pay our respects to our precious brother Robin. And I want to speak to you today because our dear brother Robin, he made it his ambition in life to be ready to spend eternity with Jesus. And that's what he's like. I want to say this to you today. This family would mourn for a short while. The Bible says that those sorrow may last for a while, but joy comes in the morning. And I want to say this to you today. They mourn today. You can see their tears and you'll hear them weep today because God created us to be emotional beings. It's natural for us to cry when our loved ones depart, but they would not mourn forever. God would turn their sorrow into joy and he would turn their mourning into laughter in his due time. And that would happen because they know that Robin is in eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now today, for those of us that are standing here and we don't know Jesus as our personal Savior, the Bible in John chapter 14 verse 5 says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Today I declare to you that Jesus is the way to the Father. I declare to you today that Jesus is the only way to the Father. We cannot go to the Father through any other means but through Jesus. Robin knew the way as he believed in Jesus as his personal Savior and he accepted him. Robin was prepared to meet Jesus when his time had come. The question is today. Are you ready to meet Jesus? We all will stand and meet Jesus because the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed for man to die once and thereafter judgment. I want to say this to you today. My dear brother Robin is in the presence of God where he's met Jesus Christ as his personal savior. He met Jesus as a loving savior. The question today that you need to ask yourself, my dear friends, will you meet him as a loving savior or as a judge that you are in fear of? To meet him as your savior, I want to ask you today to invite Jesus into your life. For no man is assured of tomorrow. Today is the appointed time. I don't know that I'll wake up tomorrow and sometimes my wife gets frustrated when I say that. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. But that's the truth. The night that you saw Robin, for the family that had, had spoken to Robin, the night before the Lord had called him, you never knew that you were going to be called home the next day. But he was ready. And I want to encourage you today, for those of you who don't know Jesus, invite Jesus into your life. Accept him as your personal savior. I want to say this to you today, with all the joy that Robin had in his life, that infectious smile that he had in his life was because of Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. Robin prospered. Robin has been through experiences where he came out on top because Jesus was his savior. Today as a family, the best way that you can honor the life of this dear brother Robin and your dear father and dear uncle is to walk in his footsteps. And if you walk in his footsteps, you would find yourself in the presence of Almighty God. And that is where our dear brother Robin is. And today, precious family and precious friends, let not your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust in God because he promises eternity. Trust in God because he's concerned about our broken and our aching hearts. Trust in God because he promised a home. Trust in God because tomorrow when everybody has gone back to their home, precious family, Jesus will be with you because he says in, in, in Hebrews 13, 5, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. My Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the life of my dear precious brother Robin. I thank you for all that was said about his life. And every word is true, Father God. You are a witness and you are a testimony to the life of my dear precious brother Robin. I thank you, Father, for his time on earth. I thank you for the lives that he's touched. 
I thank you for the people's lives that he's caused to come to eternity. Only you know that. Thank you for his precious wife and his precious daughters. I thank you for all that you've afforded him to do for their lives. And Father God, in their absence, won't you strengthen them? Won't you command your angels concerning your precious daughter and her very own daughters? That you would bless them, Father, that you would strengthen them, that you would uphold them with your righteous right hand, O God. Father, in these days that lie ahead, may they know that the God of heaven is watching over them, that the God of heaven is going to strengthen them. I pray for the dear sisters and their respective families, for Macy and for Roshni today, Father, for their husbands and for their children today. I pray your precious hand upon their lives. Comfort them, O God. Strengthen them, O God. Thank you that your word says in Psalm 46 that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Help them to be still and know that you are God. I commit this family to you. I commend this family to you that you would strengthen them, that you would give them grace for each hour of this day that lies ahead. Father, even as we celebrate the life of dear brother Robin, I pray that you be glorified in all that we do. And even as we continue further to the crematorium, may your name be glorified and strengthen this family and guide them, Father God. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. With much thanksgiving. Thank you, dear family of God. God bless you. Thank you, family. You've been such wonderful friends. Such a wonderful family for your patience. We've been out in the sun. We are unfortunately under a bit of time constraint. We need to leave here by 4 o'clock to get to the State Crematorium. I know the family wants to put some flowers into the hearse. Again, I'm going to remind you about COVID restrictions. Please do not touch caskets. Do not touch the earth. Walk past, place your flowers. And at 5 2, we will close. In three minutes, time three or four minutes, we'll have to close the earth and then we'll proceed to the uh, charity crematorium. Those who wanted to render an item while uh, the family and friends are placing the flowers onto the hearse, we may do so. A lot of this. Everyone that knew Rob and Mama. You all would know that music was his life. And he looked to the fullest. I think it was a month ago that we, we published a video on Facebook. A little did we know we're going to be dedicating this song to our mom.
over there? Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to get this right. shot of the birds. Hey, can you start from the beginning again? It froze. What, your phone? phone froze. Okay. Oh no, they're all in the back.
over there? Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to get this right. shot of the birds. Hey, can you start from the beginning again? It froze. What, your phone? Okay. Oh no, they're all in the back.
over there? Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to get this right. shot of the birds. Hey, can you start from the beginning again? It froze. What, your phone? Okay. Oh no, they're all in the back.
It really breaks our heart here today to come to summarize such a young life. But even though God has called him at a young age, it's not so much as to how long we live, but as to how we live that really makes the difference. And just like Abel, the word of God says he had a short life, but his life spoke beyond the grave. And your dad's life is just that sermon. It always brings comfort and reassurance even to our heart uh, as we come together here today to bring a formal summary uh, of his life. You know, over the years since I got to know him in 1994, I watched him steadily grow. And uh, I'm glad that the peak of his life was one which he totally surrendered and gave himself unconditionally uh, to the work of the Lord. And uh, just to know here today, the word of God says, you know, blessed are they who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, for they shall rest from the labors and the works shall follow him. Follow them. And I know for sure that uh, our Father is safe in the hands of the Lord. I have all of the assurance, I have all of the hope, I have all of the belief. It's just that practically, emotionally, we get to miss him. And as a family, you'll miss him so much more, family, as you're growing. And as days go by, it's going to be even more difficult. But there's been some very fine uh, words and statements, and, and Dad has left a good example for you today as a family and I pray that you'll continue to emulate that uh, that faith that he had in God no matter what was against him you know you always stood firm and, uh, and I had some very intimate moments with him uh, when uh, you know you felt sick uh, uh, the first time through and uh, when we all gathered as a family and he weren't so sure about the diagnosis regarding uh, the cancer that he, that he had and uh, I quite remember the day and he says Pastor you know, when the doctors came and told me that I was diagnosed, I laughed. And the doctor wanted to know whether there was something wrong with me and I wanted to go for counseling. He says, says, no, you know, I'm perfectly fine. He says, well, you know, if it's been diagnosed, it's fine. And if God is so allowing it, what can I do? That was his response, you know, regarding his faith in God. And you know what? God has seen him through. God watched him over through. And I can just but imagine as a father what his last moments were as he had been wrestling with God away from you as a family. His desire would have been, literally, God, please take me back home. I want to be there for my wife. I want to be there for my children. And I'm sure there has been an ongoing mental battle that really went on. But the finally, I believe that he surrendered himself and said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And so he acceded to the will of God for his life. And we pray that the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will be there for you. The Lord will comfort you. The Lord will guide you. The God of the Bible will help you. And that you will still keep your eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what children that you'll keep your eyes upon the Lord and continue to trust this God that Father placed so much of confidence and so much of hope in that you will know for a surety that where he is, someday you too will be there in that place because God has given us the reassurance. So the parting is only just for a moment because there will come a day when we'll live on for eternity. And this is the last time that Father will ever die in life because God has promised eternal life. He will never ever die again. So may you be comforted, may you be encouraged, children. May the Lord strengthen your family that are around you today. And may your hearts just continue to be strengthened even at this very, very, very difficult time when you aren't able to have that final goodbye, that moment to say, Dad, I love you. I miss you, Dad. And you'll all forever be in my heart. And I thank you for everything that you do. But you know what? God hears your hearts here today. And God will forever watch over you just as he did with dad for all the years of his life. So may the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord be with us. Even as we prepare to release this casket right now uh, to its final resting place, I pray that the Lord will give us the comfort and the strength. The word of God says this in Revelation chapter 21 and verse number 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I'll give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and she, and he shall be my son. Dad is no longer going to be reading the written word. He's now in the presence of the living word. 
enjoying the presence of a God and the God whom he has been looking and wanting to see all the days of his life. God bless you. God be with you. And for as much as it pleased Almighty God to remove from this earth our dear brother Robin Suraj, I now submit his body to the furnace, dust to dust, and ashes to ashes. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, even as we come before your mighty presence. You can understand the emotion and you can understand the feeling because, Lord, it is something that you have given to us. And you knew that humankind will cry. You knew that humankind will have tears. You knew that we will have moments of sorrow. And therefore, Lord, you gave us so much of promises in your word for a time such as this, when you said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though we were dead, yet shall he live. And you also said, Father, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For my Father's house, there are many rooms. If you are not so, I told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare the place, I'll come back and take you. That where I am, you shall be also. And God shall wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more pain, no more mourning, no more suffering, no more crying. These are words, Heavenly Father, that you left behind. To instill hope in us, even in the midst of death. To know that, Lord, death is not the end. Because, Lord, you defeated death. And because, Heavenly Father, death serves you. And we live only but in the shadows of death. Thank you for your son. I thank you, Lord, for his life. And may, Lord, the legacy of his life continue to live on through his family and those that are close and dear to him. May his life be the perpetual sermon that will bring glory and honor to your name. Thank you once again, Holy Father. And to this end, do I leave this, your children before you, even as I dedicate them as well at this present moment. Give them grace, give them courage, give them fortitude. Give them, Lord, the hope to believe that someday they too will have the opportunity of reuniting with you and reuniting with Dad. To this end, do I commit them to your presence as I ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Very tight, very tight, I feel you're not. Very tight, you're not.